That's our wonderful client, Preet. Right there, Preet is the proud owner of this beautiful BMW 335. We're gonna kick off the daily grind today with this great German car. Uh, so, what do we do for this? We did a set of KW coilovers, and recently the last edition was these wonderful Apex Forged Arc 8s. So, we all know Apex wheels, we all know the custom shop's a dealer, really lightweight wheel, um, wonderful upgrade for your BMW, amongst other cars, but they're very popular for the Beamer brand for sure. Um, they make their normal flow form wheels, and then they make their Forge version. So the Forge line came out uh, pretty recently um, as compared to the whole spectrum of the business. I think they've only been out for maybe a year or so with the Forge line. So really uh, happy to put them on this vehicle. But this is the Arc 8, very iconic shape, iconic style. But again, it is Forge aluminum, so these are even lighter weight than the normal Arc 8. We ran an 18, 9.5 all around with like a mid offset on this uh, F30 and it sits just right, so it is a square setup. It went from the factory tire on a 225 to a 255 all around, so now he's got some uh, some nice grip. But it really fills out the fenders really well, looks great. It's a nice little stretch on the tire. We also converted the uh, the lug bolts to a stud conversion, so now this way uh, Preet can run anywhere from, you know, I don't know, no spacer up to about a 20 millimeter spacer and always be able to just use the same studs and lugs. It's a great way to uh, be able to rock different size spacers without having to change the length of the bolts every time. So if you're a Beamer guy and you're watching this, definitely do a stud conversion. I did it on my M2. One of the best things that I've done to the car so far, uh, especially if you're someone that's gonna be changing your wheel setups from winter to summer a lot. So yeah, check it out. This is a really, really nice car, dude. Hell yeah. Creed, how do you like it, bro? I like it. You like it? Yeah. He likes it. Nice. That's what it's all about. Yeah, so he said that it really like freed up a lot of that weight. He notices the car performs a lot better as far as acceleration and turning, and it just feels like there's weight lifted off the car by having, you know, less of that rotational weight in each corner. So, not to mention how good it looks. So, good job, Preet. Nice choice, bro. That's it, man. You're the man, bro. Did you, would you just look at it? Doesn't sound too good. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm sure you remember the TCS Montero from a couple episodes back. It's my personal truck that we use for a lot of good camping and overlanding and just general daily driving and hauling of parts and all that stuff. So a uh, recent update is this wonderful ARB Sahara front bumper. These bumpers do come with like a little bull bar here. I decided to rock it without the bull bar. We're actually gonna use this space to put like four nice driving lights across. So uh, pretty hyped up about that. This is a steel bumper, so it's definitely a little more heavy than the original. But the idea is now I have a spot that I can mount a winch, um, a great area for recovery, and just overall a little more protection. Um, especially when you're off-roading and stuff like that. Sometimes maybe your approach angle, sometimes you're scraping and hitting things. It's nice to have a little higher clearance, stronger bumper in the front. Uh, where the license plate would go, we had this great Pia 10-inch yellow ion light bar laying around the shop. So we figured let's throw it on in there. It's pretty much the perks I have in a shop. Sometimes you get these great little parts. And you're like, fuck it, let's try it on my vehicle, right? I could be the test dummy for everything. But um, found out the hard way, these bumpers do not come with fog lights, so we're waiting to order those. Well, I already ordered them, waiting for those to come in. I'm gonna swap those out. Brian did a great job on installing this bumper. It took him quite a while. What I really like about this too is they gave you these little like, little like lower eyebrow, like fill-in spots. So that's pretty cool. This bumper is made to be painted, so it has this nice uh, gunmetal finish but it is prepped to be painted. So I can either maybe paint it to match the rest of the trim, or I was thinking of maybe painting the trim to match the bumper. I think mm. the full gunmetal or like a dark colored trim might really do well in bringing the rooftop tent together. But if you guys want to comment below and let me know what color to paint it, I'd really appreciate it. That'd be pretty cool. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Go, go, go. Go, go. Making some progress on that Delica, so that's good. But yeah, this is gonna be great, man. I think I'm the only person on the East Coast with this bumper, and there might be, I think maybe five Monteros in total in the country that rock this bumper, so pretty cool. A little claim to fame on that one, you know? <laughs> Test driving this Delica, right hand drive. We didn't mirror image the camera, we swear. <laughs> and uh, here we are. So, 
We pieced together a lift kit. What what smells yeah, like? Yeah, I know. I just duty. had a huge whiff like this. So I'm thinking it's the blinker, but those are the wipers. Because technically, we're still in Japan when we're inside this truck. Yeah. Dude, this truck's running right now. It you... feels good. I love that. This is a uh, Delica. Japanese four-wheel drive van, very popular in surf culture. So uh, shout out to Julio, the owner of this cool van. And shout out to our buddy Chris um, with the, oh shit, yellow XJ for referring Julio here. So we really appreciate the business. Recent things we did to this one um, was brake service. So we did some front rotors, front pads. Um, the rear, we went to change the brake shoes, but the axle seals are actually leaking. We did axle seals, uh, rear, brake shoes. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you can tell I don't drive right hand drive vehicles too much. We did a, a lift kit on this as well. So we brought it up about two inches to fit a 31 inch tire. It's got some BF Goodrich KO2s. Um, and a nice Enki RPT1. They look great. Um, nice classic Japanese wheel. Nice dark color. It plays really well with the uh, green paint scheme. So we were hyped up to find that one. And we think it looks great. So right now we're just test driving, making sure there's no rubbing of the suspension. I mean, rubbing of the tires rather, since the suspension install. And she seems to be pretty good. So we're loaded up. We got me. We got our wonderful camera guy and our editor and our kick ass everything right here. My man Clive Sway Tech. And we're cruising in this right-hand drive car. We're very blessed. We got some pretty cool jobs, right, Clive? Dude, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> Sitting on this side with being a passenger, I'm kind of confused. It's wild, right? I feel like I should have a steering wheel in my hand, and I don't. <laughs> you know, when I started the custom shop, well, we started the custom shop, I should say, about six, seven years ago. Um, I didn't think I'd be driving around right-hand drive vans, but hey, times change. So, you know, a lot of people say, that the US doesn't really get all these sick cars that like Europe and Japan would, and it's true, it's definitely true. But we do have to be blessed that and thankful that at least our like modification aspect, right? Like our ability to modify cars and you know, kind of put parts on them at will is kind of still there. Um, there's some other countries where it's literally you just illegal. like can't put shit on your vehicle. Yeah, it's literally so kind of sucks. You can't customize right or personalize it. You can't register it. It's not really legal for road use. So you know we might not have all the coolest cars, but at least we have a lot of liberty as to what to do with the cars that we do have. So let's do a lock to lock turn. Yo, she got some torque, bro. Oh, all right. Oh my God. Whoa! Oh my God. Like five G's right there. <laughs> Oh, look at this man running because he knows the speed of this van. He cowers at the sheer velocity. Oh, hey, that, there's some, some Robertos. <laughs> this thing's awesome. Dude, it just looks like a toaster oven going down the block or something. <laughs> I can get used to this, dude. I like the bus driving position. You know, you're like front forward, you're, I'm over the motor, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So you literally have to like lift up the seats to service the engine. Wait, what? Yeah, you're sitting on top of the engine. Because think about it, the wheel is here. Oh yeah. So we're like, you know, it's cool because you can like pull these things up super close and park them. It's very easy to kind of like judge your angles. Mm -hmm. Look, if you see that mirror right there, that mirror actually lets you see the front of the bumper. Oh. See it? So these are like super caveman like backup cameras and shit, right? <laughs> And if you look in the back window, there's also a mirror there that allows you to see the rear bumper. Oh. So, you know, before actually physically backup cameras, like have, having them in vehicles or front cameras or side yeah, cameras, yeah, yeah. like mirrors did the job, dude, you know? And a mirror will never short out on you. Nope. So, that's pretty cool. See, so look how like tight you can make turns because there's, the nose is so short, you know? So we just did a great test drive of the Delica. Just wanted you guys to see it kind of in the open. Uh, check it out. But yeah, right here, these are the great RPT1s we were talking about. Nice six slug. Um, you have a 31 inch, you have Goodrich KO2. A lot of closeness here and here. We made some room. We moved the step up actually a little bit to create a little more room here and we seem to have got it. I get a very, very slight, slight rub. So I'm gonna have the boys just check it over again. Maybe we can mod it just a little more, but she's almost ready to go. Um, but this is a very, very, very cool van, so 
just wanted you guys to check this out. Alright guys, forgive the appearance of this wheel. It's winter in New York, so not the prettiest time, right? But we're not looking at all that. We're looking at these wonderful big brakes here. So, these are Terraflex. Yes, man. Just the disrespect. We, we bought the loud lift. It was an extra option. We made sure to get the loudest lift possible. Huh? But um, yeah, check it out here. So we have a Terraflex big brake kit. This is called their Delta system. These are uh, four piston, extremely strong uh, calipers for the front. And you have a slotted rotor as well. So all four corners have this set up. When you're doing a big brake kit like this in the Jeep Wranglers, it is super, super important to have the right uh, master cylinder. So what we do is a um, little trick. We use the master cylinder set up from the big bore brake kit. Um, not the big bore brake kit, wow. Edit, edit. <laughs> we use the uh, master cylinder kit straight through the dealer. Um, Mopar does make a larger brake kit for the Wranglers as well. And they supply a really, really strong uh, larger bore master cylinder kit. So we actually source that from the dealer, pair it up with the TerraFlex brakes, and you got a really good combo. So um, This truck definitely needs a lot more stopping power. Um, if you pan out and we check this bad boy out, this is a truck built up here at the shop. It has pretty much everything full tilt for a nice street truck. Um, and a lot of weight, a lot of modifications here. 37 inch tires, steel bumpers, so there's a lot of weight here. And uh, we want to make sure that it stops correctly when he needs to. So, Terraflex, big brakes, uh, Delta, the Delta system is the way to go. One of my faves. Yeah. Actually, hold the light on them and get that, that, that clearance. Jesus. Yeah, the other here. We have just, just the right amount of clearance here. It's like a credit card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. So, that worked out. Customers should be happy. This is a really cool one, um, Lotus Exceed. So uh, shout out to our buddy Ben, wonderful client who owns this phenomenal sports car, brought it down here, did some great work to it. Um, Brian last week had did a great set of headers uh, and exhaust on it, and we changed some of these intercooler pipes uh, to a dry carbon. And we're gonna be moving over to some interior work by the end of the week, so hopefully you guys come back in on Thursday get a little information uh, on the interior stuff. But basically we're gonna be doing some like carbon fiber interior pieces, some Alcantara wrapping, um, some suede stuff, and uh, it should be, should be quite nice. But this is a very, uh, very cool car to have here in the shop. Um, it's nice to have, you know, a right-hand drive van and then turn around and you have a Lotus. So we've got a good array, different vehicles here. It's what the custom shop's all about. We're very, very blessed to have these wonderful cars. Um, yeah, man, thank you, Ben, for bringing this Lotus. Can't wait to finish it for you. Can't wait to get it back to you. Although we love having it in the shop, we know you need your car, so you're almost there. Oh, this is cool. Got to, got to show them the, the intercooler, right? So the intercooler's right here. The way the intercooler gets fed is straight through this duct, which travels this way, up and over, right into this wonderful scoop. So if you see the car from the front, your air will kind of just kind of travel here, straight through the bumper, maybe through this diffuser up here, into the top. So it's pretty cool, right? These cars are built for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's driving, and probably the track setting or more of a curvy setting. So, look how low they are, right? I guess I'm pretty tall. I'm six feet, but that's pretty sweet, right? I love that well, there's this like this Jeep could probably run right over this vehicle. Probably. Like, no, no problem. problem. <laughs> I love that there's literally nothing in this interior. No, yeah, this that's the whole idea. Literally it's, nothing in here. It's a min minimalist design. Everything stripped down. You know, I mean, that was like oh, very basic. I can't say stripped down because you do have panels and stuff, but um, it's just made just to drive. You're literally sitting right on the floor. 
Once you're in, you're in. It's not a car you want to be hopping in and out of. You don't want to go get milk in this thing. You want to, you know, take it to the track, so. But it's pretty cool. Sounds really yeah, nice. So we did some exhaust cutouts on a six cylinder Volkswagen Touareg. Think she sounds pretty good. So we have a uh, switch right here that we close the valves. So let's see if we can give you guys a little sound clip factory. Very mild mannered. And then when you want to open them up, you hit that switch. good compromise if you want to go back to uh, you know a factory sound and then you want something a little more aggressive so pretty much works for any car it's more of a universal part that we weld in a little custom aspect so anybody with a car out there you want to make a little noise let us know guys thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the daily grind here on YouTube we appreciate you coming down and watching what we do here at the custom shop make sure you subscribe to our channel turn on those notifications tell your homies about us we appreciate it we'll see you next week we appreciate it we'll see you next time where we do some more work on this Lotus pretty heat pretty heat mix it up